This data file contains an overview of the planet's Castrovel. Dubbed the Wild, the planet hosts many different habitats, but most well known are the humid jungles that grants Castrovel its epithet. Castrovel is one of many worlds which make up the Pact World Alliance. This introduction to Castrovel will take a look at the dominant species of the Wild, the planet's contributions to the greater galaxy, and a brief summary of Castrovelian societies. For more in-depth information on any of these topics or those relevant to the planets not mentioned, please feel free to review any of my other entries. Castrovel, the second planet from the Galerion system's sun, is a lush world brimming with life and seas that are regularly stirred by immense storms. Not to be discounted, the wild is also home to a vast array of wildlife from enormous saurian beasts who soar Castrovel skies and hostile jungle creatures which stalk the planet's vast wilderness and, on occasion, encroach on settled regions. Castrovel has three native intelligent species, the insect Hotformians, Lashuntas, who are the most prominent of Castrovel's three native societies, and elves, many of whom fled back to this homeworld of theirs and live reclusive lives on Sovereign after the gap. While home to many native species, each with their own contributions to the planet's development into the lively world it is today, Lashuntas are the most populous of the uplifted races on Castrovel. The telepathic humanoids are often curious of the customs and cultures of outsiders and excel as diplomats and corporate agents. The Lashuntas are also signatories to the Pact Worlds Alliance and have close relations with the planet Akaton. Lashunta explorers traveled the Red Planet by way of magical portals well before their discovery of spaceflight. Lashuntas notably have evolved adaptive genetics that split their race into two subspecies after puberty. Either tall, intellectual, and adaptable Demaya, many of whom fill the ranks in their society's political leaders, or the shorter and hardy Korosha, who have a history of being warriors and explorers. A Lashunta Korosha can make a valuable travel guide during a trek through some of Castrovel's more perfidious terrain. Moving on to the second in our order, but certainly not in their importance to the planet, the hive-dwelling Formians, who resemble giant wingless insects with humanoid upper bodies, have battled the Lashunta for millennia. However, partly in thanks to skilled Shireen diplomats, the hostilities between the Formian and Lashuntas formally ceased through peace talks in 287 AG. Formian society is segregated into four different castes within a hive. On the top of the order is the Hive Queen, who dominates all in her burrow. Second to a queen are the Miramarks, who act as aristocratic and mercantile taskmasters, directing warriors and workers. The warrior caste is comprised of sterile females who are afforded more individuality than their worker counterparts. The increased individuality at times causes some four-man warriors to rebel against those in higher stations and are outclassed of the broken minds, which I'll touch on in a bit. Workers, the lowest class, rarely gain a name beyond their number within a clutch. These workers are the brunt of four-man labor. Four-man society can be seen as a rougher climate to most outsiders, and the broken minds region is a testament to this. Here. Four mains who chafe or revolt from their station in four main society are re-educated by mostly Shireen aides to prepare them for lives outside of four main rule, be it on or off Castrovel. While the selling of disobedient four main may seem callous, this is in fact a large leap forward, as before Shireen emissaries were able to convince hives to sell their malfunctioning Formians to the Broken Minds region, they were simply slain for their disobedience. Shireen scientists are particularly interested in the study of these rebellious outcasts to see whether this spontaneous rebellion might hold the secret to the Shireen's own break from the swarm, and perhaps by the teachings of their shared goddess Helix, who teaches individuality, especially insectile life, who wish to break free from a hive collective. To further the idea of laying hostilities between Formians and Lashuntas to rest, the Sea Crown is a landmass to be controlled jointly between the two races. However, due to the anomalous nature of the region and shadowy creatures which dwell within, this is more of a symbolic effort. 
While the lower beaches can be explored, the strange cities scattered on the islands are usually inaccessible. Entry is blocked by cylindrical force fields of unknown origin, which start halfway up the mountain slopes and spire to a close in the upper atmosphere. The architecture of these cities here is unlike any known style of the system, believed to be the central peaks of an ancient impact crater forming the shattered sea. These sharp mountains loom over trackless waves. The only denizens of the region are strange Lashanta-sized shadows which haunt the twisting cities. There is a moment of opportunity to explore these regions. When the planet's moon eclipses the sun, a doorway opens in these force fields. Although several exploration teams have ventured inside with the goals of making contact with these shadowy inhabitants, none have returned. Their gear, oddly enough, reappears on a beach or found years later, thousands of miles away. Elves are the third native intelligence race on our list, and their history can be uncovered by exploring ancient ruins, long since reclaimed by Soviet Reigns wilds, or in grand cities such as Nurendel, high in the Kornath Divide. Nurendel, shared by these natives and gnomes, is home to the Green Gate, which allows access to the First World. The more reclusive elves stay in their sequestered cities like El, where they vigilantly bar outsiders in all but the most exceptional cases. The elves of Castavel were said to have been hit harder by most after the gap, having lifespans which may have lasted during or before this loss in memory. The horror of forgetting the moments which brought families together or deeds of a well-lived life is a reality known only by a few unfortunate species. Their suspicion of non-elf stems from a belief that this loss in memory happened when some unknown race or entity betrayed them. Castrovel is split into four continents. Azana, home of the Lashuntas, is the largest among these, with every biome from snow-capped mountains, humid jungles, and rocky deserts. The coastlines are mapped well. However, its interior lands are still rich with secrets and await discovery. It was primarily dominated by matriarchs who reigned over independent city-states, each with differing governmental styles. In modern times, this has shifted to larger corporate concerns, buying out officials and setting up their own private settlements. The nationalism which ran rampant during Castrovel's time of matriarchs has given way to industrial espionage and corporate influence over private citizens. The second on this list, dominated by the Formians, has many names and may change depending on the region and beliefs of the queen in charge. The Unified Hive and the Everlasting Queendoms are just to name a couple. The fertile continent of Sovereign is homeland to the elves and is partitioned from Castavel's other cultures by icebergs and the dangers of the snow salt sea, as well as the Lemonor Oceans and the Sea of Teeth to the north. Our fourth continent of Ukalam is an isolated region and has never known lasting colonization. The wide range of deadly plants, immense fungi, and tremendous beasts have made this region inhospitable. Vicious wildlife laying any attempts to at settling Ukalam to ruin and Cashavel's decision to preserve nature are two reasons for this region being unstripped of its natural wonders and horrors, depending on how you look at vicious megafauna. Quabarat, also known as the Shining Jewel of the Western Sea, is the capital city of Azana, and home to 819,000 souls, primarily Lashanta, who make up roughly 70% of the population. Quabarat is also the planet's largest spaceport and a massive financial and academic center. A series of magical portals connect Quabarat to other Lashenta settlements across the planet and other worlds. Savirain has a number of ancient settlements speckled among ancient ruins long since claimed by the continent's evergreen forests. Corodana, a safe haven in the vast forest, is guarded by a massive steel wall vigilant soldiers, and miles of automated defenses, partitioning it from the rest of the mainland. Visitors without an invitation to the continent are funneled through Cordana, where petitions can be made to various corporate enclaves and embassies for access. Decorated in the majesty of elven culture and wealth, this city is a stunning work of elven architecture and hospitality. This is in sharp contrast to the elven capital, 
El, the capital of Sovereign, is nearly untouched by time, and access to outsiders and non-elves is often denied. Massive great houses span the size of neighborhoods of most civilizations, and high families still climb cliff walls to enter sides of the city's magnificent waterfall. Elven tradition mingles well with their respect for nature and technology as ancient ruins are augmented with the latest biotech and magical advances. Modern skyscrapers blend with living trees to further showcase the elves' respect for the balance between modernization, nature, and tradition. Castrovel makes a serious effort to maintain its wealth of untouched wilderness and wildlands. To preserve this vast wilderness, most shipyards and environmentally dangerous industries are based on the airless rocky moon of Alendre. The ecological preservation of wildlife and megafauna on Castrovel has attracted hordes of Xeno wardens, many orders of which are believed to have been founded on the green planet still claim it their duty to protect Castavel's wildlands from encroaching corporate interests. The hot green world has the largest population of green faith followers in the Pact World system. In addition to being a founding planet of the Pact World Alliance, Castrovel is the source of some of the finest diplomats the system has to offer, and attracts many of the system's best researchers and starship navigators. Castrovel also provides the galaxy with a wide range of exports, such as ships from the Kivalari Collective shipyards, manufacturers of the popular Kivalari Venture Explorer. Based on the planet's moon, the Kivalari Collective plays a major role in the development of starship parts, and their distinctive style can be recognized by their use of delicate wings and ships boasting exceptional speed. The most prominent gods and goddesses on Castavel are Demoratash the Conqueror, Desna, Song of the Spheres, Elateru, the Hidden Truth, who the Lashuntas have utilized one of their runes on his holy symbol for millennia. Helax, the Forever Queen, is particularly important to the Formians and Shireans, who work closely with them. Oras, the Agents of Change, who many of Castavel's Xeno Druids follow in their teachings of the Green Faith. And finally, Irasia, Lady of Wisdom worshipped by many Lashuntas, who claimed she was once a living scientist, who learned all that could be taught on the mortal plane. Being a planet open to newcomers, well, as long as you stay out of the Elven homeland, there may be other deities with places of worship hidden on this planet, but these are the most widespread. That concludes this entry on Castrovel, home to the Lashunta, Formian, and Elves. While this was an overview of the planet as a whole, more in-depth information on individual races, religions, and history can be found in their individual log entries. If there is specific information you require, but it is unavailable in the archives, ask and I will see what I can find.